Good morning and welcome back to the African Allure Outdoors. Now, <clears throat> it has been some time since we've last posted a video and after numerous requests have decided that maybe it's time to start getting back onto the bandwagon and producing a little bit more content for you guys. And uh, I thought one of the places that I'd like to start this year is probably with camouflage. I've been doing a number of walk and stalk hunts. Uh, in fact, this week... Uh, I spent two days with a very good friend of mine, Will, um, walking and stalking on a very, very large piece of ground. And uh, we're both big guys. We're both 6'5 uh, plus. And um, it's difficult enough for one person to walk around by themselves. But when you're two people and you're two big guys with big feet, big bodies, and you've got to move around the bush, it's even more challenging. But we had some pretty amazing experiences. We got in really close to a lot of animals. We were privileged to have a female impala at about uh, seven yards. And Will was at full draw. Um, we did not, however, harvest that uh, impala because she had uh, a young lamb with her. And we decided to pass on that one. Anyway, we were successful with the hunt. Um, on Wednesday this week, we put in 22 kilometers, got in really close to a lot of animals. There were a lot of opportunities that we could not take because simply the vegetation was too thick. Our ideal time for walk and stalk hunting in South Africa is anywhere from December until late April before the leaves fall off. And uh, in this time, the bush is usually pretty dense here and there is very little dry leaf litter underfoot. And you're able to walk in to animals without them noticing you there. But I think a lot of people have many misconceptions about camouflage and what camouflage to wear. And I thought maybe I would just open the dialogue with the um, camouflage and just share with you with what works for me. Remember, as I was saying to you, I'm a big person. I'm six foot seven. Um, I have a size 13 and a half boot. So, you know, getting around the bush is um, a lot easier for a short, skinny person that is small, uh, that has a, full, a small foot size. But uh, we make it work for us. And um, there's a couple of tricks that I'd like to share with you. Um, in terms of camouflage, I found that the best all-round suit in South Africa is uh, a ghillie suit, similar to this, what I'm wearing. What is very nice about this suit is that um, it's very well ventilated. So you can put on a normal t-shirt under this. You can even go shirtless if it's very hot. Um, and this will still break up your, 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 your outline. There's a few things that we must remember. Is it is not necessary to imitate the bush that you're hunting in 100%. Um, Remember that animals don't see color in the same depth that we do. The three main species of animals in the world that actually do see color in high definition are all the primates, including humans. Um, then birds are your other big one that see color. Um, so we're not too worried about any of those. You know, we're more worried about the antelope species. And they kind of do see color, but they just don't see it in the same depth that we do. Quite important in the African context is that many of the African species of are scared of upright man or any animal with forward-facing eyes because that indicates to them that, they're, that we're a predator. So the more you can break up your outline the better it is. Um, and this is one of the reasons that I like this big uh, ghillie suit is that it is a loose fitting um, pullover top. 
Um, what is also really nice is it's got this hood, so you can you can change your profile because the head profile on a human is something that really really stands out for a for a human. And I know that there are a lot of people that um, hunt successfully with caps, um, but I always recommend to people if you've got a, a nice big floppy with a wide brim. You know, it kind of just breaks up your head pattern. Even though it's not very much, you still haven't got that uh, typical head formation of a, of a human, which is what the animals are really scared of. Um, so, in terms of colors, color is not so important. I think uh, it's better to stay away from the light colors, such as white, yellows, greens, oranges. Um, although we see the Americans hunt very successfully with them. Um, they will work here in South Africa. I have hunted in those things. But I think the bigger trick is to move away from solid color patterns, like having a solid colored shirt, which is probably the big one. Um, I like more the disruptive camouflage type of um, wear, if you want to call it. And that's why I say to you, I like this kind of leafy suit because it's disruptive. It's got different colors. You'll see that I've put gloves on. Um, so these gloves normally come full finger. I normally cut the fingers off. Um, one of the things that you will find when walking in the bush here in the summer months is that we have these little flies, these little black flies. And they're a real pain in the butt because what they do is they come and land on your ear or they land on your face or they land on your lip. And the whole time you are doing this. Now, with with a hand that is camouflaged against a, a, a similar background, the animals are not going to see this. But when you take your glove off and you've got this, the animals are more inclined to see a solid color moving. And it's people's hands that give people away more than anything else. Um, the other thing as well is another solid part of your face, unless you've got facial hair, which some of us can't grow, then uh, you need to cover this. And it is hot in summer, but um, just by covering up this, you can see, and pulling your hat down, you are now pretty nicely camouflaged. So there's a lot of options in terms of buffs and, and, and all those good things that one can purchase um, for hunting. I do like the gloves. Um, these gloves are actually come from America. They're called Huntsworth. Um, they're the same color as uh, my buff, and I've got a shirt on under this uh, ghillie suit as well, which is also... And the color they have there is called Tarnan. Now, one of the things that I really like about the Tarnan coloration is that um, they are, they've got a whole variety of colors, and they've got bits of white in it. You must remember when you look through a bush, you're not just seeing the bush itself, you're often seeing through the bush. And this, to me, is what this color pattern does, is it actually looks like you're looking through vegetation. Animals are very attracted to movement. So you've got to keep your movements down, um, especially when you're getting to close quarters. Um, and it's quite important that you also learn to draw your bow as smoothly and quietly as possible. A lot of people chase high poundage and um, they've got to really put a lot of movement into opening the bow. Rather drop your pounds a bit and be able to just open your bow as slowly as you can and as effortlessly as you can. Then your success rate is going to, to pick up. In South Africa, um, in the early part of the year, which is, as I said, from December until probably about the end of April, maybe mid-May, there are lots of greens in our bush. So you kind of want to wear clothes that have a lot, of, a lot of green in them. And then as the year progresses, then you want to sort of move to the lighter, drier colors per se. South Africa does have some very nice camos. Um, you don't really want to go to the browns too much. We don't have too much brown in our vegetation type. We kind of have more greens and grays. So that's what you want to you wanna stick to. I'm going to whip off this and you'll see this tarnan color, color of, um, 
of, of Huntsworth goods. I really like this. This is one of my favorite colors to hunt uh, out of uh, tree stands from. Um, it really <clears throat> does make for very good camouflage. What I do like about this coloration is you'll see that it's got uh, greens, it's got browns, and as I said to you, it's got the whites. There's also a little bit of black thrown in there for good measure as well. And uh, there are other factors to consider when walk and stalking, and the other factors are um, naturally scent. I think if one were to order the priority of camouflage, one would be your scent camouflage. Um, it's very important to have a good wind indicator if you're doing walk and stalk. Um, those of you guys that are doing static hunting out of blinds, um, it's a good idea if one has them. And uh, Ozonics is a very good um, machine to have. Um, obviously, those are out of the price point of many people, um, certainly in, in Africa. Um, but we can burn things like mosquito coils or uh, the number one priority is actually um, zebra dung although it can leave you with a rather raw throat in the evenings if you're if the wind is blowing the wrong way and it's blowing into the hide um, then the second most important thing is sound the quieter you can be the more successful you're going to be so wind sound and then movement and as I was saying to you earlier, just the simple thing of chasing flies away from your face here is something that does definitely let the animals pick up on you. So stay away from that. And um, yeah, I think uh, it's important that the top half of your, your body be camouflaged. I think it's not always necessary that the bottom half of your, your body be camouflaged. It depends on the habitat that you're hunting in. In our particular area here, we tend to have a lot of uh, shorter vegetation. And also one is inclined that when you're getting close to an animal, you, you, you are very careful about your footfalls. And inadvertently, your movements are greatly reduced from the waist down because you are careful of where you're putting your feet and you're not disturbing the animals um, by standing on sticks and stuff. And therefore, you've got less movement. But your hands, your arms, all that kind of thing, it's very important to keep those still. I think um, the other thing is, well, is when you're starting to get very close on animals and, you know, you're within that kill zone, if you want to call it, of, say, 30 yards, then I think one needs to actually come to full draw. Um, I saw it now in the last few days. If you can come to full draw and you can hold that for some time your shot window will present itself even if it's just a small little hole through a bush if it presents you must take it um, obviously you want to put the um, shot in the right place you don't want to shoot it through um, the rear shoulders <laughs> the hips you want to try and hit it through the vitals preferably double lung would be the ideal or a little bit lower through spaghetti junction, or if you even go lower than that through the heart. Remember, a direct heart shot to an animal, it's probably not going to bleed so much because you stop the, plump, the pump from pumping the blood out. And the other thing as well, the heart is normally situated pretty low, so there can quite often be a lot of large bones that need to be negated to actually get an arrow through the heart. So the safe shot is spaghetti junction or a little bit higher for a double lung shot. Remember African animals, you're wanting to shoot them on the shoulder. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I've got about camouflage. Remember, please, if you have any comments, please leave a comment down below for us. I'd love to hear from you guys. It's been a while. And... Uh, if you like the stuff, if you like the content, hit that like button, subscribe, and I guess we'll see you out there in the field. Happy hunting this year. Hunting season has started. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye. Hey, hello. Hey, hello.